Hi, my name is Amina. And I'm Alia. We're in grade 10, and we are making a video on how to write a perfect design report. I think we can all agree that design is a complicated subject. It's impossible. Don't listen to her. In this video, we're going to show you how to write specifically a criterion A so that you get an A. It's possible. So in this video, we're going to break down criterion A into the different sections. We're going to discuss the mind map that every student does at the beginning of their report. Then we're going to discuss your problem and your target audience, which is very crucial. Um, afterwards, we're going to discuss your research plan and the product analysis and the research analysis and also your design brief. Finally, we're going to review the additional research that you should be including in the end. So for this video, we're going to be using an example of my Criterion A that I did in a report earlier this year. So um, this is Amina's mind map. Um, mine is prettier, obviously. Um, so this is Amina's way of thinking. And something that students need to understand is that um, mind maps depend on each person. So this style may not be yours. But any mind map should basically include your goal in the center, um, the different topics that you're thinking about exploring in your project, and then more specific ideas branching. As stated by the title, the problem paragraph is where you talk about the problem you'll be focusing on and fixing in your entire project. So in mine, I'm focusing on domestic violence, as we said before. Now, in the first paragraph, I'm really going to talk about domestic violence and what it is, maybe define it more specifically. And then for the rest of it, you need statistics, a lot of statistics or research you can back up with evidence, reliable sources, obviously. And you should always remember to do in-source citations uh, where you just put the name of the uh, site you used or the title of the article. Don't link it like I did. You don't have, it's not a problem, but you probably shouldn't. It doesn't make much of a difference. Um, so, right, you'll have the information backed up by research, all of that. And then finally, the end is very important. You need to have a personal connection. Why are you choosing this problem? Uh, why did it interest you? Is there something in your life that relates to it? That there's a reason you chose it? All of that. Um, I didn't devote that much space to it, I only did a paragraph and then all of this is research, just so you get an idea of how much research needs to go into the problem paragraph. Uh, and next, so in the problem paragraph, you're also supposed to talk about the target audience. In this case, you know, to be such a good student, I did it in a separate paragraph. Go down. It's not a very big paragraph, um, I just did it separate because that's a lot of writing right there and I needed to cut. And, um, in the target audience, I, you really just gotta talk about who you're aiming this project on. Be as specific as possible. So here, I'm talking about uh, my target audience is victims of sexual or physical uh, sexual or physical assault um, in Paris. So really specifically, I give a gender, uh, something that happened to them, and a location. So that's very specific. That narrows the list down. Um, and that's what you should do too. It doesn't have to be as specific. You could also give an age group or a like, demographic, but it's really good to be specific. Welcome back to us teaching you how to write a design report worth an eight. Hi, I'm Tess. I'm also in grade 10. I was the camera woman before, but I got promoted and I'm now on screen talent, replacing Alia. So now we're, gonna, we're still using my example of my design report from early this year, and Tess is going to give a rundown of the research plan, which is section two. Except three. As <laughs> you can see right here, this is Amina's research plan. Um, in this plan, you're going to want to include the piece of research that you want to do. Uh, it's usually phrased in the form of a question. Some students choose to put statements. Personally, I like questions better. I find them more informative, and you can just answer them. Uh, for questions, just ask really simple things. Like they can get more complicated as you go, but start simple. So first, say I was doing a woman's. Uh, I'm going to design a women's shelter in this report, and I start with what is a women's shelter's purpose? You know, just get that down there. But as I go on, yes, apologies, I get more specific, and I go to let's see what elements are there to a shelter. So yeah, you go more in depth. What software can I use to design a shelter? Things like that. To give you an idea, the research plan 
if a teacher reads it, they should be able to think, if this student does everything on this research plan, they will be able to make a perfect product. That is what they tell you in design class as well. <laughs> so that's the research part. Okay, next for the source activity part. Um, this is where you will find the research. For example, websites. If you want to get an A in design, you can't just say, I will search the internet. You need to have a, this, either a link or the specific title of the website you're going to look at. This requires you doing the research in parallel to the research plan so that you have everything at once. All the links that you use, you will then put in your bibliography, which we will cover later on. Um, other, otherwise, if you don't want to specifically do them in parallel, another option is to just do the research plan first, and instead of putting links or sites, as I did here, you can instead put um, keywords or research threads. So here I said, I will research this question using Google and putting in the keywords, women's abuse shelters in Paris. So just really be specific about how you're going to find this information. The reason here is why you need this piece of research. Uh, most of the time, the reason is related to your target, mar target audience or target market or to your problem paragraph. What happens after you do design is that you want to keep referring back to every piece of research you've done prior. So in the research plan, you would be referring to your target audience and the problem paragraph as we mentioned previously. And then finally, the relevance level. So in this case, I did high, medium, low, but it's completely up to you. I think the generic one, the generic one is high, medium, low, but you can do on a scale of one to 10, one to five, whatever you want. So you just specify it and then explain why. Now, one thing I was very confused about when I first got to ISP was this PS section. If you are new to ISP, you may be confused as well. Um, teachers don't exactly explain it to you. So what happens is P is primary research. These are, this is information you will find by observing or by collecting raw data. So a survey, for example, is primary, is primary data. An interview, reading book. No, that's not primary. That's, a book would be secondary information, which is what the S stands for, as would internet or... It's pretty much it's it. Pretty much it. <laughs> In this section, we will be showing you how to write a perfect product analysis. So, in your product analysis, you'll be analyzing three products. Uh, these products have to be in relevance to your topic. So in this section, I'm doing women's abuse shelters. So they have to be something sort of about women's abuse or something similar. So it, I did uh, three women's organizations uh, and I analyzed them as you're supposed to do. Um, in the, it's really important because in the product analysis, at least one source needs to be primary. Now let's remember a primary source is usually a physical product. Um, Otherwise, you can have two other secondaries and you can have three primaries if you want, but really one at least one needs to be primary. Yeah. So, next section is source. I will actually make this a different part of the table, but you don't have to, you can put it right there. Uh, the source should just cite like your sources, just like we discussed before. Next is questions. For the, this product analysis, you can't just analyze, analyze pieces of product as you want, you actually have to have specific questions. So just they have to be questions that you would ask about a product to find out more about it. Because you see the point of a product analysis is to uh, get inspiration for your own product or get an idea of what is necessary to have something to help the problem. So now as you can see, Amina has um, questions very specific to her product. Some students prefer having more general questions that they can then apply to all three products like or, all, or different projects. Um, it usually is better to have more specific questions. Exactly. So if you if you didn't have anything as specific as this, you could have what is the purpose of my product, what how it size is my product, what color is my product, things like that. But since I'm doing a women's organization, a shelter, I really need to be precise with this. So I did what was something general. What is the product? But then lower down there is more specific. So does it take volunteers? Uh, how does it help victims? Things like that. So you get. You can get more specific if you want, but you'll get the same grade as long as you analyze it well. So then in the answers, you just answer all the questions. You can do it in different sections. I chose to do them uh, bullet pointed, so just a, a list of questions and then answering them in a paragraph. But if you want, you can have a table where you have question one, question two, and then answer each question individually. It's really all about format, style. You can do it however you want, as long as you answer the question. 
Mom's back. Hey. So now we're going to look at research analysis. Research analysis comes after a research plan. Um, go ahead at it. So um, you're just going to literally copy paste all of the questions you had in your research plan yeah, that we mentioned before. Um, so just copy paste them in your research section, okay? All the questions right here. And then you're going to have to look at your findings, right? Findings are um, just a bullet point of your notes. This can be a little complicated because teachers always have a hard time explaining this for some reason. Basically, just have your research and rephrase it in your own words. Say what you learned from it. Mm -hmm. Summarize it. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, we're going to discuss the impact on your design. So this is just you explaining sort of how the results you, find, you found will impact your final product. And something very important for you guys to understand is that um, for grade nines and below, I believe, um, the research analysis and the, is sort of a summary of all of your research and then the additional research is all the research you've done. So they're in separate sections. But for grade 10, they're sort of interchangeable. They're both working together. You should be summarizing all of your research, which is kind of complicated. It takes a long time, but it's okay. <laughs> exactly. So for grade eight and grade nine and all that, they make it a little bit more simple. Here you just put a summary, it could be shorter, and then you have a separate section for additional research. Uh, and then for grade 10, you just you kind of smush it all together. And uh, ask your teacher if you want to be even more precise on which one they want, because even in grade nine, they might uh, have a different idea of what they want. But uh, otherwise, it's just one of these. Okay, so this next section is the design brief. Now, I think it's just important to say altogether, as you might have noticed, that design is really dependent on the teacher. Really ask what the teacher wants. So even though what we said in the research plan might be specific, like you can have questions or statements, ask your teacher, do they prefer uh, questions or statements? They always might have preference or something like that, but usually both count. It's really up to the teacher. This is the same for the design brief. So there are, for the design brief, in grade and grade nine, they might give you some sentence starters, which are extremely helpful. You might not want to use them, maybe rephrase them, but essentially these just kind of tell you how to break down your paragraphs. Um, to start with, you might want to have a little brief reminder of what your project is about. So once again, in mine, that is about women's abuse. So I say, I explain what the problem is and how I can solve it. So I say, okay, so my problem is that women are getting sexually assaulted and how can I solve this issue? And I say, well, a way that we can solve it is provide a place where women are safe or can recover from such abuse. Uh, so that's just me explaining what the product is. And as you can see in the first sentence start, it says, I intend to make, to design and make a, and so you'll explain what your product is. So I explain my women's abuse shelter. And then you have to explain why you chose the women's abuse shelter. So I said I chose to solve this product by doing so-and-so. Now back it up with your research, back everything up. So either bring it back to your problem paragraph, bring it back to your research plan, research analysis, additional research, always bring it back to something. Uh, back up with research all the way. Next is the, so you have to re-explain what your target audience is. If you didn't explain it as specifically before, you can maybe say, oh, thanks to my research plan, my research and my research analysis, I realized that I can make my audience more specific. So not only is it women who are sexually assaulted, it's also women who are sexually assaulted in Paris. Uh, so be more specific and then back it up with research, again. Remember for grade 10 that um, in one of the strands, especially for the e-portfolio, they want you to summarize your research. This is important. Apparently in your design brief, you summarize your research as a story. Yeah. <laughs> Next uh, is You'll explain the, the function of the product. So how is the product used, you know, different components of the product, just explain it in more detail. Um, and then back it up again, say, oh, I learned this in my additional research that so-and-so. So just back it up once again. And then there is, you will explain how this product that you're planning on designing will solve the problem. So how it helps the situation. Uh, and then based on your research, these sentence starters are very simple. They really explain everything, what it boils down to. Finally, explain more specifically what your design is. So if I'm doing a women's abuse shelter, I'm gonna say a women's abuse shelter with four stories, it's gotta have bedrooms, it's gotta have the kitchens, bathrooms, be more specific. The QWERTY keyboard was originally designed to slow down typers. 
The reason for this is because in the olden days, a long, long time ago, typewriters jammed if people typed too quickly. For this reason, the QWERTY keyboard was designed, and hence, jams no longer existed. The Firefox logo isn't a fox, it's actually a red panda. It's still possible to visit the world's first web page. Email predated the World Wide Web. The vast majority of the world's currency is digital.